What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English vid. I'm Gadia. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 super useful expressions. I love making videos on informal expressions because they improve our fluency and prevent us from translating. It's going to be the first episode of super useful expressions this season. I hope you like it. Are you ready to boost your vocabulary? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off! So the first expression we're going to learn today is get real. Get real. You can use this expression when someone is unreasonable and unrealistic and you want them to stop behaving as if they were living in a fantasy world. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, get real. If you want to buy your own apartment, you should work hard and save money instead of hoping to win the lottery. Get real. If you want to buy your own apartment, you should work hard and save money instead of hoping to win the lottery. The second example, get real. Your boss is not going to offer you a pay rise. Start looking for a new job. Get real. Your boss is not going to offer you a pay rise. Start looking for a new job. And one more example, get real. He is not going to change. You'd better find another boyfriend who is more aligned with you. Get real. He is not going to change. You'd better find another boyfriend who is more aligned with you. Now let's move on to our second expression, which is it's the last straw, or we can also say it's the final straw. And in the past, it would be that was the last or the final straw. This expression comes from the proverb that's the last straw that breaks the camel's back. It means the last unpleasant event in a series of problems that makes you realize that you can't stand a negative situation any longer. And now a few examples. The first one, he didn't even apologize for being half an hour late. That was the last straw. I'm not going to meet up with him again. He didn't even apologize for being half an hour late. That was the last straw. I'm not going to meet up with him again. The second example, having a meltdown was the final straw that made her try meditating. Having a meltdown was the final straw that made her try meditating. And one more example, it was the last straw when he went berserk and started insulting me. It was the last straw when he went berserk and started insulting me. Let's continue our expression number three is good for you. Good for you. We can use it in two different situations. The first one, you can use it when you're happy for someone's success or good luck. An example sentence, I've got promoted. Good for you. I've got promoted. Good for you. The second example, coronavirus is not bad at all. My life is so much better now that we're working from home. Good for you. Coronavirus is not bad at all. My life is so much better now that we're working from home. Good for you. But this expression can be also sarcastic when you don't actually feel happy for someone. And for example, when somebody is showing off or bragging, you could answer good for you sarcastically. An example sentence, I've bought a Chanel bag. Good for you. I've bought a Chanel bag. Good for you. Our expression number four 
is nice going. Nice going. It means well done or good job. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, if my student tells me I've got an A in my English exam, I can answer nice going. I've got an A in my English exam. Nice going. One more example. The presentation was a success. Nice going. The presentation was a success. Nice going. But it can be also used in an ironic way to say that someone has done something stupid. For example, you ruined her surprise birthday party. Nice going. You ruined her surprise birthday party. Nice going. Let's move on to our expression number five. I'm on it. I'm on it. We need to stress the word on. I'm on it. When someone asks you to do something and you are about to undertake the task or already started doing it, you can say, I'm on it. And it's very common in a business environment. And now, a few examples. The first one, please, could you book a table for tomorrow's lunch with our client? I'm on it. Please, could you book a table for tomorrow's lunch with our client? I'm on it. The second example, get in touch with Mark ASAP. I'm on it. Get in touch with Mark ASAP. I'm on it. And one more example, please drop the contract by tomorrow. I'm on it. Please drop the contract by tomorrow. I'm on it. And before we continue with our lesson and learn five more super useful expressions, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and your notifications are turned on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. Thank you. Let's continue. Our expression number six is I can't hear myself think. I can't hear myself think. We use this expression when it's very noisy and loud and it prevents you from concentrating. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, my neighbors are so noisy and loud that sometimes I can't hear myself think when I record videos. My neighbors are so noisy and loud that sometimes I can't hear myself think when I record videos. It's a true story and it's happening right now. The second example, let's get out of here. I can't hear myself think. Let's get out of here. I can't hear myself think. And the last example, please stop making that noise. I can't hear myself think. Please stop making that noise. I can't hear myself think. Let's move on to our expression number seven, which is, it's a real game changer. It's a real game changer. We use this expression in two different occasions. The first one, and the most common, we use it when something or someone changes the situation or the outcome of something for the better. And now, two examples. The first one, buying this agenda has been a real game changer as it increased my productivity. Buying this agenda has been a real game changer as it increased my productivity. The second example, opening an Instagram account, has been a real game changer for our business. Opening an Instagram account has been a real game changer for our business. But we can also use this expression to talk about a change for the worse. For example, the planning laws are a lot less strict now, so houses can be built on green belts. The planning laws are a lot less strict now, so houses can be built on green belts. 
Let's continue our expression number eight that makes two of us. That makes two of us. We can use this expression when we are in the same situation as the other person and the same thing is happening to us. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, when I left the cinema on my birthday, I told my friend, I didn't understand what Tenet was about. And I was relieved when my friend told me that makes two of us. I didn't understand what Tenet was about. That makes two of us. Don't worry. The second example, I haven't traveled abroad this year. That makes two of us. I haven't traveled abroad this year. That makes two of us. And one more example, I failed the exam. That makes two of us. I failed the exam. That makes two of us. Two more to go, number nine, for old time's sake. For old time's sake. We can use this expression when we do something to remember a happy time that we had in the past. And now, three examples. The first one, what should we toast to? Let's raise a glass for old time's sake. What should we toast to? Let's raise a glass for old time's sake. The second example, let's go out tonight and do something fun for old time's sake. Let's go out tonight and do something fun for old time's sake. And one more example, let's travel to London for old time's sake. Let's travel to London for old time's sake. And last but not least, a super useful expression, and all, or, and all that. We can use both options. And it means, and that sort of thing, and similar things. And we use it to refer generally to everything else related to what you have just mentioned. And now, three examples. The first one, I'm glad you're back and all that, but we need to get down to work. I'm glad you're back and all that, but we need to get down to work. The second example, I'm sure Jacob is a nice guy and all, but I really need to get going. I'm sure Jacob is a nice guy and all, but I really need to get going. And the last example, I'm happy your trip to Paris was wonderful and all that, but there is something I want to bring up. I'm happy your trip to Paris was wonderful and all that, but there is something I want to bring up. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this English bit and found it useful. If you want to learn more super useful expressions, check out the previous edition right here. And guys, if you're a foodie, love traveling and want to improve your listening skills, don't miss the fourth season of Somebody Feed Phil that was released on Netflix last Friday. As you may know, I'm a huge fan of the show. I've seen all the programs and in this season, Phil is going to travel to five new cities. They are set in Rio de Janeiro, Mississippi Delta, San Francisco, Hawaii, and Singapore. If you like this TV show like me, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen it yet, check it out on Netflix. And last but not least, I hope you've learned some new expressions today. If you did, don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to my channel and do my daily quiz on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!